That's just so horrible. At the end of the shallows, just deep enough for the light to fade, something ancient lies hidden in the sand. It's at least the length of a man, armed with spring-loaded jaws, waiting for anything unlucky to pass by. The bobbit worm, Eunice Aphroditus, is an ambush predator that can cut a fish in half with a quick snap. If you want to see one, you'll have to go to the warmer regions of the Atlantic or Pacific Oceans, wait until nightfall, and dive about 40 feet. You might be able to spot a tiny opening in the sandy bottom or in the soft sediment of a coral reef, and a few antenna that indicate something is living down there. It doesn't need eyes to hunt. It's completely blind, in fact. Its long antenna are covered in tiny sensory hairs called mechanoreceptors, which I gotta admit sounds like something you'll find on a transformer more than a sea creature. These detect vibrations, currents, and contact with nearby prey. Even the slightest disturbance in the water, like the movement of a shrimp or a fish passing overhead, creates the tiny pressure waves that the antenna pick up on. But the chance of seeing one is actually quite low. They'll dig out several feet of sediment, making their own burrows, hiding their entire bodies with only the head poking out. The bobbit worm is also known as the sand striker or the trap jaw worm. If you do manage to catch a glimpse, you'll see an impressive color display. These shimmering bronze, green, and purple hues aren't made by pigment. Instead, they're structural created by microscopic layers in the skin that bend the light into spectacular colors. The name Bobbit is believed to come from the case of John and Lorraine Bobbit, where Lorraine swiftly chopped off John's Johnson. <laughs> Her quick and deliberate attack became associated with the worm's lightning-fast strike, and the name just kinda stuck. If you're afraid of stepping on one, well, you'd be right to be afraid. Not only are they insanely fast, but their bristles are venomous and they can deliver a painful sting, sometimes even causing nerve damage. They can regenerate if chopped in half, so killing one is kind of off the table as well. At least one part may survive, sometimes both. This comes in handy when your burrow collapses or the worm is damaged. It also means they can reproduce asexually, the boring way, splitting into segments that grow into new worms. Usually, they reproduce through broadcast spawning, which means the female releases pheromones attracting the male, who releases sperm into the water. Sometimes a portion of the body breaks off, swimming to the surface to participate in the mating. The fertilized eggs float until they hatch into tiny little worms. These worms swim to safety and then often hiding in the tiny little rocks they can find along the shoreline. Divers sometimes harvest these rocks for use in aquariums, and since the worm is nocturnal and a stealthy feeder, it can sometimes go years unnoticed in one of these rocks. The Blue Reef Aquarium in the UK once discovered a four foot long bobbit worm in one of its tanks. They had been losing fish mysteriously and dismantling the tank only to find the culprit, a worm they named Barry. He got his own tank, though little is known what actually happened next after that. Some researchers believe they can live for decades, maybe even centuries. And even though most estimates put them at a lifespan between 3 to 5 years, there are stories of these worms living in tanks for up to about 13 or more years. They are omnivores, eating almost anything that drifts their way. Dead fish, seaweed, and especially small fish. Inside their muscular pharynx are two bladed mandibles made of hardened chitin, the same tough material found in many invertebrates. The mandibles stay folded inside until the worm is ready to strike. Then the worm turns his pharynx inside out, launching the blades forward. This isn't just muscle, it's elastic energy released in a violent burst. The worm grabs its victim, yanks it into the sand, and then begins to feed. But prey aren't defenseless either. Some fish, like the Peter's monocle bream, have evolved a clever defense. When they detect the bobbit worm, everyone piles on it and they mob it, blowing jets of water into its burrow and right at its face, they force the worm to retreat and also exposes the burrow's entrance, making the area safer for both themselves and other fish. The size of the prey is mostly limited by what the worm can pull under. But a four-foot worm can take down a fish over a foot long, or even larger. And if prey is long and slender, who knows? The mandibles can tear prey apart, so it can be eaten in pieces. 
Deeper in the throat, the worm has small tooth-like structures that help move the food down its body and prevent escape in case it's still alive. That's just so horrible. <laughs>